Episode 116, The Ape King's Hunger. Roger felt very envious when he saw how Blair's treated Stephen. He immediately said, it's so rare that it's raining. Let's be here a little longer today. Stephen didn't say anything else. The beast men kept on howling until the moons reached the peak. The three different colored moons appeared clearly in the night sky. The beast men still hadn't had enough, but the faint clouds had already drifted away, and there was no way that they would return no matter how much they cried out. This was the rain that the beast men had called for themselves, and they were more proud of it than if they were to beg others for it. After being in the rain for half a day and half a night, Blair caught a cold without any surprise. Both Roger and Stephen quickly brought her home. They passed by a waterfall on their way back. The rain had caused the waterfall to start flowing again. All sorts of animals were crowded around the lake, greedily licking at the muddy water in the lake. Despite that many of them were connected by a food chain relationship, no fighting took place. When the three of them reached home, Stephen placed Blair on the bed, taking off her clothes quickly and wrapping her up with a blanket. If you aren't feeling well, why didn't you say earlier? Stephen reprimanded her angrily, but seeing how weak she looked, he couldn't bear to scare her too much. Blair curled up under the blanket. Despite the hot weather, she didn't feel warm when covered under such a thick blanket. She had really caught a cold. It's been so long since I've come into contact with water, so I wanted to have a dip for a little longer. Wasn't it the same for you? Blair wriggled over to Stephen like a caterpillar. Was it comfortable? Stephen's breathing paused, and his expression was cold as usual. However, his overly pale skin had exposed the flush on his face. Didn't you want to give birth to cubs next time? Blair glared with wide open eyes. I'm only asking if you felt comfortable having a dip in the water. What are you thinking? Stephen chose to ignore Blair's explanation and just took it as if she was shy. He said, Roger is too useless to think that he hasn't gotten you pregnant yet. Damn. Roger happened to enter with a bowl of ginger soup, but he paused in his footsteps. It was only after Stephen looked toward him that Blair noticed that Roger was here. Blair glared at Stephen, then quickly said, what did you cook? I'm famished. Quickly bring it to me. I've boiled a short-winged bird, but it'll take a little longer. Finish up this yellow root soup first. He threw a cold glance toward Stephen, then said, Keep an eye on the fire. I'll go to the Camel Hump Valley to call for a doctor. No need, Blair said. A faint flush appeared on her pale face under the ginger soup steam. I'll be fine after getting some sleep. Females aren't as fragile as you guys think. Stephen had taken care of Blair when she was sick before, and this time around it wasn't as serious. Therefore, he wasn't very anxious and said to Roger, Go and cook more food. Blair likes what you cook. If she still doesn't get better tomorrow, then we'll call for a doctor. Roger went back to the kitchen to cook. They had to continue to conserve water, but today was a day worth celebrating. Knowing that Blair wanted to eat spaghetti, Roger used the bird soup to cook up a bowl of handmade spaghetti for her with rich toppings. It had been very long since the last time Blair had eaten piping hot food with soup. Her appetite was piqued and she only put down her wooden fork after she was so full that she couldn't drink another mouthful of soup. Blair said as she leaned against Roger's warm chest, Do you guys think that the Ape King's reputation will be compared to Rex after this? Roger gave it some thought before saying with affirmation, To the beastmen who don't know anything, Rex will seem a lot more amazing. He was able to detect the flooding and drought earlier than the Ape King did. 
He also made an outstanding contribution to farming. Although the Ape King managed to call for the clouds, he only gave everyone false hope and there weren't any direct benefits. On the other hand, Rex managed to lead everyone to call for rain. Furthermore, it was with all the Beastmen's participation. Not only did they get the rain they wanted, but the comradeship they shared from standing alongside each other would also let the Beastmen be more partial toward Rex. Roger explained rationally. Blair tightened her small, pale fist, exerting so much force that her joints turned even paler. Then there wouldn't be any chaos if the Ape King is killed now, right? Stephen threw a glance toward Blair before standing up. Blair immediately understood his intentions and quickly said, Take a rest for a day. Wait for Rex to go along. Stephen's thin and pale lips curled into a confident and contemptuous smile. There's no need to go to the extent of killing him. Roger wanted to go as well, but was ordered by Stephen to stay at home to protect Blair. After Stephen went out, he also called Rex over to get him to protect her. The Ape King's face was like that of a vicious ghost under a transparent crystal soft glow in the dark room. He put the transparent crystal into his mouth. As the light source was gone, the room instantly sank into pitch black darkness. Gradually, the light from the night sky spread to this place and the Ape King's face appeared once more. He touched his own face and his expression became twisted. No, this was still not enough. He was just a little short. When the water flowed into the river, he knew that he was in danger. He decisively took out all of his transparent crystals, including the one he had gotten after combing through the tiger castle. He ate all of them, but was still unable to break through the two-striped bottleneck. He could sense that the energy level in his body was full, and he was just one step away. If he could get another Beast King's transparent crystals, he'd definitely be able to advance to become a three-striped Beast Man. The Ape King's eyes rolled a few times. His eyeballs were so agile that they were like that of a toy puppet in horror films. His gaze settled down and the Ape King's shadow moved outside. Stephen came to the Ape Castle with a strong killing aura. The two striped beast men guarding the Ape Castle weren't worth mentioning in his eyes. The wolf beast men didn't wish to court death either. They merely surrounded Stephen not daring to act recklessly. Stephen moved around the castle as he wished, as if there weren't any barriers at all. Stephen's snake tongue allowed him to accurately capture the beast men's temperature. He was even able to sense the petite figure hiding behind the door. However, he didn't check it out, since he knew that it wasn't the Ape King. The Ape King was known to be an intelligent king after all, and was skilled in hiding his tracks. Stephen was unable to detect any traces of the Ape King, even after searching through the entire castle. Left with no choice, he could only go home. Nadia trembled as she pushed open the door, walking out from the corner. It was too terrifying. That beast man's disposition was too cold. Even as a female, she could feel that she might be killed at any moment. She was so scared that she couldn't even catch a glimpse of the beast man's face. Was this Blair's feral beast mate? A figure covered in a cape and moving hurriedly appeared at the Wolf King's castle. Stop right there. Who are you? The wolf beast men on guard let out a stern shout, blocking his way. The ape king put down his hood and the wolf beast men immediately backed off and said respectfully, Ape King, you're here to look for the Wolf King? Please come in. The Wolf King was stunned when he saw the Ape King's strange dress up and then noticed the fruit peels under his feet. He asked, What are you doing? I'm being targeted by the Snake Beast Man. These things can conceal my scent, the Ape King explained simply. The Wolf King instantly flew into a rage. He wants to kill you? Feral beasts are really barbaric. 
We shouldn't have let him stay on Blair's account back then. It's too late to say this now. The Ape King interrupted the Wolf King's furious words, looked at him with an anxious gaze, and asked, Where did you put your transparent crystals? In my bedroom. Do you have an urgent need for them? Quickly give them to me. The Ape King's tone sounded even more anxious. He even acted roughly, grabbing the Wolf King's shoulders. The Wolf King looked at him, feeling perplexed. He then led him to the highest floor. The Wolf King's family members were also immersed in the joy from the rain and hadn't slept. The female in the room was chatting happily with her mates, her words showing her great admiration and respect for the Tiger King. The Ape King's countenance immediately turned ghastly pale, and he glared at them coldly. The Wolf King feigned a cough, and the beastmen in the room immediately fell silent. They then got up and greeted the Ape King respectfully. However, this Ape King sounded very piercing to them. Do you still have matters to deal with when it's already so late? The Wolf King's female asked softly. The Wolf King replied in a gentle tone, We'll leave right after taking something. You guys should have an early rest. Don't sleep too late. After picking up the transparent crystals, the two kings went downstairs to the fifth floor, where it was quieter. Two shadows were cast on the ground of the dim room, one tall, the other strong. Give me the transparent crystals. The shadow that looked wider and stronger had its hand reaching out to the other. The ape king's voice sounded hoarse, and there was a clear tone of desire in it. For some reason, the Wolf King suddenly drew back his hand and asked, Why do you need so many transparent crystals? Where are your crystals and the Tiger King's? Aren't they enough? It's because of the prayer for rain this time around? The Wolf King tried to ask. Yes, the Ape King replied patiently, then reached out his hand toward the heavy animal skin bag that the Wolf King was holding. The Wolf King instinctively dodged, feeling increasingly perplexed. The rain has come. Why do you still need the transparent crystals? Transparent crystals were the fixed assets of the City of Beastmen. When the Beast Tide came, the transparent crystals could be used to replenish the warrior's stamina. When females fall sick, they could be used as a life-saving measure. Half of the transparent crystals in the City of Beastmen had been used to pray for rain this time around, so it would be a lie to say that the Wolf King's heart wouldn't ache. Do you still not understand? Blair wants her mates to kill me. The Ape King bellowed hysterically, his eyes gleaming with a strange green glow. Give me the transparent crystals and I'll be able to level up into a three-striped Beastman. What? The Wolf King was shocked. Using transparent crystals to fill up the gap to reach a three-striped Beastman? The reason the Wolf King was in unconditional submission to the Ape King was because of the City of Beastmen. He felt that only one that was intelligent was suitable to lead the City of Beastmen. The Ape King was the best Beastman candidate for the role. However, what did he just hear? The Ape King had used up half of the City of Beastmen's transparent crystals and was now even asking for his. Even if it was because he wanted to save himself, the price to pay was too great. The transparent crystals were the City of Beastmen's wealth. The Wolf King couldn't help but tighten his grip on the bag, giving his assurance in a low voice. I'll go look for the Leopard King. I believe that he won't sit by and watch. The Ape King suddenly fell silent as he took a deep glance at the Wolf King. No one knew what he was thinking. The Wolf King assured once again, the City of Beastmen's citizens won't allow them to do this either. Don't worry. All right the Ape King replied. The Wolf King heaved a sigh of relief and quickly turned to head out. Suddenly, all the hair on the back of his neck stood up, with every single pore screaming, Danger. Danger.